We spend a lot of time in our home and so it's important that our home feels beautiful and represents who we are and that we feel comfortable in our own space. And I personally believe that it does not have to be perfect, it just needs to feel right. Because if we walk into a space that's really cluttered and chaotic, it is going to have an impact on how we feel. One of the ways that we can brighten up a space and incorporate some more personality into it is by decorating. But the downside is that decorating can also quickly make a space feel more cluttered. And that is the opposite of what we want to achieve if you are striving for that more balanced and harmonious space. So today in this video, I will share 10 Simplify Your Home tips that you can use to decorate your home, but without making it feel more cluttered. A big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I'm really happy to be working with them again and I will chat more about them later. But for now, let's dive right in. For me, the biggest thing that helps me to improve the quality of my living space is a change I made in how I went shopping for decor items. So what I used to do is I went to the store and then I found a decorative item, whether it was a pillow or a blanket or a vase or a candle holder, picture frame, anything. And then I just fell in love with it in the store. I bought it, I brought it home with me, and then I tried to find a nice place to put it. But what that ended up doing was making my space feel way more cluttered because there was never any thought or intentionality or purpose behind any of the items here. They were just here because they looked good in the store. And I often found that once they were in my home, they just didn't really work in the same way. So I felt kind of disappointed and then I would go out and buy another decorative item and then the process would kind of just repeat itself. So what I do now instead is letting my home tell me which decor items it needs and which decor items to get. So I never buy something random from the stores anymore. And instead I just see a place in my home that I feel needs something. And then I start thinking about what kind of item would work well there in that space. Maybe a plant or maybe something on the wall. And only when I feel like I really have a clear sense of what would work well in that space, then I go out and I search for something, an item that fits that. And it also fits the color scheme of the rest of the things in my home, which is something that I'll talk more about later. Speaking of which, I think it works really well if you want to simplify your home to make sure that every item in your home serves a clear purpose. And it does not mean that it needs to be functional because another purpose can just be that an item is aesthetically pleasing, but every item should be there for a reason. One of my favorite quotes when it comes to minimalism is have nothing in your home you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. And I think that can really help because if we take a good hard look at the decorative items that we have in our home, I think we can often find a few that are just there collecting dust sitting there without really there being any reason for it because we don't really love them anymore. This quote actually helped me out so much when I was decluttering my decorative items a few years ago and I really did find that having less decorative items in my home made it feel much more cohesive and well balanced and also I really appreciate the ones that I do still have around so much more. I think that plants are absolutely amazing if you want to add a touch of color and life to your home because plants are usually green. <laughs> so they always work well together and they kind of form this one big decor item together. And because of that, if you decorate with plants, it is very easy to do that without making it feel more cluttered. I don't like to go overboard with plants. I like to have like one plant in each spot so it doesn't get like a jungle. And also if you don't really trust yourself to take care of plants, or if you have cats around, then I think it could be also a really good idea to get a few fake ones. Because I heard that plants can actually be dangerous for cats, or at least some of them can. And I think fake plants are also a really okay option, as long as you dust them off occasionally. Now let's talk a bit about colors. Colors are very important because they really work on us in different ways and we all have preferences when it comes to colors, whether we realize it or not. Some colors just work really well for us and other colors can make us feel uncomfortable and that can be different for everyone. I think it can work really well to just take a short moment to think which colors usually make you feel good and to be very intentional with the colors that are currently in your home that don't really match well with that. And I personally am a big fan 
of combining just neutral, softer, lighter colors as a base and then adding a touch of a contrasting color here and there to bring some more life into the room. But I also don't think that a minimalist home needs to be white and neutrals and beiges and stuff. That is just something that I personally like because it makes the space feel calmer to me somehow and I like to combine those light wood colors with whites and beiges and stuff and then adding green from the plants. That's what feels pleasing to me, but you can also use as much color as you want. Just make sure that the colors complement each other and that they work well with each other and that the entire overall feeling doesn't get too loud. And actually, I have been learning more about colors and interior designs on Skillshare lately. So a short break to thank them for sponsoring today's video. I'm really happy that they are supporting the channel again. Skillshare is an online learning community and they offer thousands of inspiring classes on topics like illustration, design or photography, art, uh, journaling also and more. And it is great for creative and curious people. And the classes often include a combination of video lessons and class projects and they have classes for all skill levels. So I have been binging some classes again lately, mostly about photography and also I saw one about shooting talking head style videos like I'm doing here, which was super helpful. And one other class I enjoyed was the Interior Design Basics, Simple Steps to Perfect Your Space, which is from Lauren Cox. There's also tons of other topics and classes that are very interesting. They are usually under 60 minutes long, 90 minutes at the most, which is great. And it's very bingeable because they divide them up into these very short sections of only a few minutes each. And the yearly subscription is also quite affordable because it works out to less than $10 a month. If you feel like trying it out, I highly recommend it. And the first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a two month free trial of premium membership. Another trick that I really like is to use mirrors in your home. So mirrors are great because they help to create the illusion of depth. They can really open up a space and make it seem bigger than it is. And they also reflect natural light. So instead of using a bunch of little mirrors in your home, don't be afraid to use a larger mirror in a smaller space. I'm a big fan of using natural materials in your home, or at least materials that look natural. And if I had to redecorate this space, I probably would use that principle a lot more. Something about wood just makes me feel so calming and kind of like you're in nature. So I really love to combine lighter colors with woods. And then I also love bamboo, uh, cotton, linens. I also really like it when they use brick or concrete. And I am vegan, so I personally wouldn't use leather or wool, but there's a lot of other good stuff. The next tip to simplify your home and decorate without cluttering is to make sure that your items in your home, including your furniture, have enough breathing room. So that means that there's enough space, empty space around each item. So try not to kind of cluster them up, but let them be by themselves in the space. I used to create these little clusters of accessories and wall arts and stuff, kind of like how you see it in the store. But when you do that in your own home, it can quickly make it feel more chaotic and cluttered because it's just a lot of visual information for the eyes to take in at once. So now I prefer to just let my decorative items stand on their own and it allows them to stand out more and it just works a lot better. And quickly before we continue, if you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe to the channel for weekly videos just like this one. These things really help to support the channel, so thank you. Next is not to be afraid of empty space or negative space and to use that to your advantage. A minimalist home does not mean an empty, barren room with nothing in it, absolutely not. But we can use negative space as a design element in and of itself. So that means a space in your home that is noticeably absent of furniture or decor. This works great for creating that breathing room like we talked about earlier and it kind of creates this healthy flow to the room and it also places more emphasis on the beautiful items that are in your home because they are not hidden by other stuff. 
Another one of my favorites is rugs. Now, if you have a place in your home that just doesn't feel so cozy, I think adding a rug there can really do wonders without cluttering it up too much. And rugs are just really nice. They are nice and warm and cozy and soft. And it's really nice in the winter too, or just for chilling out when you had a long day. And you can use a rug to kind of choose a calming neutral color, or you can actually use it to add a touch of color to your room. And another great tip to bring more life into your home without making it feel more cluttered is to think about using different textures of textiles instead of different colors. So for example, this works great with anything with fabrics, furniture, pillows, uh, blankets, all that stuff. If you combine, for example, really soft plushy fabrics with these really rough rugged fabrics. And even if everything is a neutral color, this does create some variation. Now I would love to hear your tips and tricks when it comes to decorating your home Home while still keeping it minimal and clutter free please share them with me and everyone else in the comment section down below if you want more right here I have five tips to simplify your home today and right here I have an entire guide for how to declutter your closet and create a more minimal simple wardrobe so as always questions comments conversations down below have a wonderful day my friends and I'll see you next week bye bye